Hey, it's Vass here from Aussie Aussie Playground and welcome to another unboxing. Today is a very special day because finally I have my Armour Limitless. Now I know I'm a little bit late to the party here. These cars were announced well over three months ago and I got this one almost three months to the day after they were announced. Uh, it did take a little bit of time for me to finally get my hands on this car. And I do have to give a big shout out to Horizon Hobby for helping me secure one of these cars. Uh, because they are, despite their name saying limitless, these things are very much in limited supply. Um, and of course, I want to also give a big shout out to, to all my Patreon supporters who uh, you know, put in a little bit every month, but every little bit helps. And without their help, I would not be able to afford this car as well as a lot of the other electrics that I'm going to be showing you uh, that I'm going to be putting into this car a bit later on in the video. So let's talk about the limitless. This was announced at the same time as the infraction. I've already got the infraction, so why would you want to get one of these? Why did I get this? What am I going to do with it? What are my plans? What are the differences? Um, well, we're going to cover off most of this, I think. I'm hoping that I can answer a lot of your questions. If I uh, missed something, please uh, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll do what I can to get back to you. But if you've already seen the infraction, and let's face it, this, these things have been out for a little while now, you probably already know all about this car. You might even know more than me, in fact. But there is the machine itself. Man, this, every time I look at this car, I can't help but smile. It's just, it is an amazing looking vehicle um, and unlike anything that's on the market today. So, you know, hats off to Armour for coming up with original design, uh, or at least styling, all right? So we'll go with that. Anyway, um, let's look at the goodies bag. Of course, there is no remote. This is a roller. It is advertised as a speed basher, whilst the infraction is advertised as a street basher. So slightly different. Um, but in here, we have the uh, 27 tooth pinion. This is the same as the optional pinion that's provided with the infraction. Um, there's also a plastic bag with a bunch of plastic in it. <laughs> there's uh, some spare body posts in here. Uh, a couple of those little caps that you can put on the rear diffuser of the uh, Limitless. Um, so we'll uh, keep that aside. Uh, tools bag, which are the same as what you'll find in a lot of the 1.8 scale vehicles that they, uh, that they sell. Uh, the Allen keys are not too bad, ideally. You probably want to get a good set of Allen keys to work on these cars. You don't want to be stripping screws and things like that. But the cross wrenches are actually pretty good. Um, I've been using those for a very long time. They've held on great. Um, Sticker sheet, who doesn't like sticker sheets? Um, so you can, uh, and these are pre-cut too, by the way, which is a big plus. You don't have to sit here with scissors trying to trim them. So uh, very, very good. Uh, so yeah, uh, keep this, you can, I don't know, stick it to your toolbox, put some extra ones on the car, whatever, up to you. Um, now, usually with the other cars, because they're ready to run, you get a speed chart. So depending on the pinion that you're running in those cars, they give you an idea of uh, what speed you're going to get out of it and where the suitable terrain is to run those th that gearing. In here, of course, this is not a ready-to-run vehicle, so they can't really give you a speed chart. And because there's like a million different combinations of motors and ESCs and pinion sizes and all this, they can't predict that. Um, so uh, they just give you gear ratios. So 27 tooth pinion, the spur gear in here is a 34 tooth, and that gives you a gear ratio of 4.17. There is also an optional 39 tooth spur and an optional 29 tooth spur. So the 39, you go up in spur gear, you're gonna gear down a little bit. Um, it's gonna give you a little bit more acceleration. So for some people, that might actually be a good option if you just want something that maybe just cracks, I don't know, 150 Ks or something, maybe you're just tapping on the 100 mile an hour, uh, but you just want something that you can bash around the car park that might be worthwhile. For those of you who really want to get crazy um, and want to try out, as, as, go as fast as you can, well, you have the 29 tooth spur uh, available to you if that's something you want to do. And then of course, the last thing that is in here, well, there's a couple of things. One is a little sheet that goes on about the armor warranty and so forth. So you might want to read through that. And then of course, everybody, uh, everybody's favorite bedtime storybook uh, the user manual. I know that there's a lot of people out there that will not run an RC without reading the manual cover to cover first. Um, and uh, I, I applaud you. I, I think that uh, you're setting the example for the rest of us. Um, I know that some of you out there actually like to read this to their kids to put them to sleep at night. Um, and uh, you know, they, they learn, uh, the kids learn, they learn, they wake, kids wake up and they have a 
Alan Key in their hand working on their car. Um, and then there are those of, you, uh, those of us out there who take this into the uh, royal throne and uh, do a little bit of reading in there while you're, um, you know, in the office. So, um, uh, lots of good information. I'm joking around, but obviously there's a lot of useful information here, especially regarding tire maintenance. These tires, they are the ex exact same tire as what comes on the infraction. Um, they do smoke up and I've seen people do it. Um, and I did it myself. And if you're not careful, you're gonna burn through these tires really, really quickly. Uh, of course, they are belted as well. So um, that's a good thing because at least they don't balloon. All right, let's bring the main event up to the camera if it'll fit on screen. I mean, look at that. This thing is massive. Um, it's, it's such a beautiful machine. I mean, look, look at how they've designed. So low to the ground. It is just stunning. Well done, Armour. This is absolutely beautiful. It, I mean, the body's kind of like that stretched Typhon look. Uh, and then, of course, you've got this F1-inspired, you know, front spoiler. It's just... Uh, and then you've got these little um, plastic pieces here that you can trim the downforce on, um, you know, following the lines. And, of course, you can remove them as well. There's only, they're only held in place by one screw, so you can take this off. And I've seen people run, them, uh, run the, these cars with them on and without, although you will do risk... You know, without them on, you have very little downforce on the nose, and I've actually seen one of these cars already flip, so uh, just be careful. Um, and then, of course, the rear spoiler, you've got those lines as well, and you can trim that down and tune how much downforce you want on the car. Um, the chassis and everything else underneath is exactly the same as the infraction, by the way. So for those of you who are maybe thinking, oh, this is what's different, you know, this is a different car, what's going on? It's the same as the infraction. Um, they've just dressed it up differently, and they've done not just a different body, this isn't like an outcast where they've just changed the body. Um, they've actually, obviously, as you can see, there's quite a few differences. Um, so very, uh, very cool and um, definitely aimed at a slightly different demographic, I feel. Um, although, I almost think that, you know, everyone that got the infraction first has ended up with uh, one of these as well. At least a lot of people did. And, um, you know, I've jokingly said online that you know, Armour should really start selling these as a package deal because it seems like everybody that buys one gets the other. And I can understand why, because you want one like this where, you know, when, the, when you want that rush of uh, speed, you know, being able to take a car past 100 miles an hour and, um, you know, see it zoom past and keeping it in a straight line, you just get this an adrenaline rush. And I understand why people did that. And when I started in the hobby, that's how I did it difference was I was doing it with nickel metal packs and brushed motors and you know I was spending $160 on a brushed motor I'll never forget it um, and it was about $230 on a no motor limit speed controller from LRP and I was paying for I think it were 2400 milliamp hour nickel metal hydrate Sanyo cell packs it was something like a hundred bucks um, you're laughing now, but I, that's how it all started. And then you get beaten by the bug. You try to crack that 100 kilometer an hour mark and you, you got a mate, which I, you, I had a mate um, who was also trying to beat me. And so we ended up spending a, a lot of money trying to make our cars go fast. Um, so I've been down this road. So I'm not gonna try and beat 150 miles an hour, which I think is the current record on this, or 152, um, because I know what's going to happen. Um, so I'm just gonna run a few different electrics. I'm gonna build my way up. I'm gonna show you what is achievable depending on the budget that you have. So even if you absolutely love this car and you wanna own one and you can afford one, but you don't wanna go spending a ton of money on electrics just because that's what everybody else is doing, I'm going to show you a few different options and that's the plan with this car and hopefully there'll be something in here that will go well you know for about this sort of money I can still get a really good speed and I'm not going to cook the electrics and I'm going to have a good time with this car. Meanwhile the end game for me is going to be to run 8S in this and I'll show you what my setup is going to be. Right now that we've got that out of the way and that little bit of history lesson uh, let's take the body off very quickly because there is something that I do want to mention about the body on this. Um, now, of course, as I said, it's got like a stretched 
Typhon look to it. Um, it's a little bit F1 inspired. Um, and the body thickness itself, the material that they've used is actually quite thick. It's the same sort of thickness that you'd find on the Outcast, Notorious, even the old Phazon bodies. You know, real nice and rigid and thick body. Um, and also, the lines that they've chosen, not only are they aerodynamic, but I think they've been very clever in the way that they've um, you know, help keep the body stiff, help keep its shape. Because let's face the facts, as I just said, these things are doing 150 plus miles an hour. The last thing you want is at that speed for the body to start changing shape. If the body's too thin or if it doesn't hold the aerodynamics properly, well then, you know, if it concaves on one side, the car's gonna veer off, you're gonna hit the curb, hit someone, hit a puck. I mean, I don't know, it, it, it could be bad. So. Armour have been very good at uh, making sure that this thing actually maintains its shape, shape and doesn't distort midway through a run. And then on the back, what they've done as well is there's a couple of cutouts on here. So even if there is air getting into the body, it has somewhere to go and exit. And then of course, any air that comes out of here, you've got this sort of like um, built-in spoiler that helps keep the body down, which is in turn going to put pressure on the chassis and help keep the car on the ground. Um, you know, which is what you want. You want it to stay on the road. Now, here we have <coughs> the chassis itself. Rear diffuser, as I said, it's exactly the same as what you'll find on the infraction. But of course, on top of that, um, you have a whole bunch of plastic, which gives you, you know, allows them to mount this F1 style uh, spoiler back here. And then of course, the front spoiler is completely different to what you'll find on the infraction as well. That just has like a little bumper with a foam piece on the front and then the body goes over it. This one's a little bit longer um, and then of course, you know, it looks totally different. So uh, pretty much everything else between here and here is exactly the same as the infraction with the exception of one thing and that is the spool diff that's on here. So whilst the infraction has a gear diff, this one has a spool diff. Now, you can probably Google this and, you know, there'll be bits of information that you'll be able to get as to why there is a spool diff in here. I know that a lot of speed guys will know what this is. Some of them actually make their own. So if there isn't one available for a particular car that they're running, they will find a way to make one. Um, Armour have obviously um, seen that this is how it needs to be done and they've provided us with a spool diff. So this allows us to have equal power between front and rear diffs. When you run your off-road cars, like your Cratons and your Outcasts, you pin the throttle, the rear wheel, you know, the car sags, the rear wheels uh, kind of get most of the traction, and then the front kind of lifts a little bit and the power bleeds to the front and you have these, uh, you know, pizza cutters at the front of your car. We've all seen it, I've done it. It happens. <clears throat> by tuning the center diff, by thickening that oil, you start to transfer the power a little bit more evenly. So the cars do become a little bit trickier to drive because they're more prone to wheeling and backflipping and so forth. But, you know, if you, if you practice this little trigger finger here, you can actually get really good power to the ground, get really good acceleration. And once you have momentum, you're able to put more power down because you're not bleeding so much power to the front, but you're getting more power down on the ground in the rear wheels. Same thing happens here. Of course, with the spool diff, there is no give. There is no power bleeding. Everything is exactly the same. We don't run spool diffs off-road because you're jumping, the, the, the terrain is uneven, and at times you need somewhere for the power to go. When your wheels lift off the ground, everything is free spinning, all of a sudden it hits the ground, everything tightens up real quick, and that's how you smash gears. Um, so having a center diff is always good. You can tune that diff, but it's not really advised to lock it up. Uh, it puts a lot of strain on your drivetrain as a result. Um, on the road, something like this, aerodynamic pushing down on the ground, car's really not gonna lift the ground all that much. You're not gonna have that free spinning wheel, you know, gears and all of a sudden everything sort of tightens up when it hits the ground. Um, hopefully that makes sense. It's a very crude explanation of what a spool diff does. I know those of you who already know what it does is probably skipping over this bit, but uh, anyway, uh, that's what it is. Now, a couple other things worth mentioning as well. Uh, just like on the infraction, the chassis has a couple of screws underneath that allow you to rotate this motor mount 180 degrees. So you have about, I think it's about 90 mil, roughly 89, 90 mil, uh, somewhere around here uh, between the motor mount and the front steering column. Once you start to get motors that are longer than that, uh, you're not gonna be able to fit them in here. So the only way to do that is rotating the motor mount 180 
you get rid of this rear battery tray on this side and then you can put as long a motor in here as you want. ESC usually sits on this side and you can set it up however you like. There's so many cool setups that I've seen online at the moment. Um, it's really quite amazing how creative people get. Um, not just that, but also with the bodies, um, because everyone wants, everyone wants to have their own unique limitless. Um, clear bodies are selling like hotcakes on these things and there are people doing amazing work. Everything from hydro dipping to very simple black and white designs to, I saw one in like a, a pearl red. It just looks stunning, just simple things like that. These bodies look fantastic and uh, I've actually got one of the clear ones on order as well. Um, I've already got the front and rear spoilers, um, but they're no good to me without the body. So once I get the body, I'll be able to do a nice cool sort of paint job on this. I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. Um, I'm not going to uh, hydro dip it. Although the thought has crossed my mind because there are some really cool guys um, around here that can do some very good paint work uh, for some of the racer guys. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I can commission one of them to do something really cool for me. So we'll see how we go. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Uh, in any case, before we close this off, I just want to show you all the electrics that I'm going to be putting in here um, and then we'll come back and I'll close off the video and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Okay, so as you can see, there's quite a fair bit of stuff that we need to get through here. So I'm going to try and be as quick as I possibly can. Uh, a lot of the more in-depth detail we'll talk about as I begin to sort of run the car. And uh, of course, there'll be links in the video description for you guys to check out as well. Steering servo is the first thing I'm going to grab here because this is going to be in the car from uh, pretty much day one. Regardless of the system that I run and the speeds that I get, uh, this guy is going to be in there unless, of course, I have any issues. This is a uh, 1210SG, 7.4 volt, 32 kilograms, um, you know, speed of about uh, 0.13, which is not the fastest by any means, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm not doing any track work. The reason why I've gone for this servo and the reason why I've picked a 32 kilogram servo is because, not because uh, I needed to steer a big weight, but if you think about the speed that we're going to be hitting at some point, the centrifugal force of these types of wheels are going to be playing a bit of a part on the servo and uh, I want to make sure that it can stay straight, that it stays locked in. And I'm hoping that this one can do the job. Uh, so waterproof, a uh, lot of power, Savox, reputable brand, let's see how we go. First motor combo that's going to go in the truck, uh, in the car rather, is going to be this guy here. It's a 2000 kV 1.8 scale brushless combo. These are fairly cheap. Uh, we sell them at Metro Hobbies and uh, you know we've been using them now for a little while and they're fine. They're just a rebranded quick run hobby wing combo. Uh, very reliable, no issues with these things. I want to see what sort of speed we can, we can hit with this uh, particular combo. So we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how we go. So that's number one. Uh, from there, I may try the BLX185 system. I do have a spare one of those that I took out of my uh, uh, infraction because the infraction currently has the Max 8 combo. And that's going to be the next one that's going to go in the uh, Limitless. So I may just, for giggles, I may just uh, run the infraction once with the combo and then I'll take it out and put it into the Limitless. And we'll see how that compares to the Ace combo as well as the BLX185. Um, so that's also going to go in here. And I think I've already seen somebody hit 100 miles an hour with that um, Max 8 combo. So that'll be uh, very cool to see. Now from there, we need to start looking at, uh, you know, what other options do we have? I can leave the Max 8 ESC in the car and run this motor. Now this is a cheap eBay motor and I'm very curious to see how this is going to go. I'm not expecting to break any sort of speed records with this, but I am extremely curious because I didn't really buy this for the Limitless. I kind of bought this for a different application, but whilst I've got it, I may as well try it and just see what a budget, uh, budget motor can get you. So this is the motor here. This is a quite a large motor too, uh, but the bullets actually fit directly into the Max 8 ESC, which I've already tried. They're, they're perfect fit. Um, so this guy here is a 1580 kV. Um, it's four poles and it is a 4585 uh, can size. So quite a beefy motor. Uh, seems to be pretty well be built. So I'm curious to see how this guy is going to go in there. Um, I'm pretty sure this will handle gearing quite well too. So uh, given that it's a, quite a low KV. 
Now, once that's done, um, I've got a Max 5 ESC here, and I'm not sure if I'm going to run it or if I'm just going to keep it as a backup for now, because I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to have this ESC paired up with this motor. Now, if you guys remember, this is the motor that I had on my Crazy Chaos Reaper. I've actually got another one exactly the same that's brand new, so uh, I may just use this one uh, for the time being, but um, this is a 1520 kV and um, you know it's it's a little bit low I know a lot of the speedrun guys will say that's too low but imagine this motor just with the max 5 just cruising around maybe on 4s or 6s in the infraction um, I think that'll be that's that's gonna be a pretty cool setup but I want to try it out on a limitless as well and see what speed we get out of it with that combo. Um, or I might just um, skip straight to the uh, Castle XLX ESC that we have here. Also have a cap pack, uh, which is from uh, Murder Packs, I believe they're called, and this is the Overkill pack. Uh, again, I'll have a link in the video description um, so that you can, you know, if you wanna get one of these um, here in Australia, th this guy does pretty good work. You can choose to have them long or more in a, you know, a, square so you can have three and three side by side um, and of course you can also choose the length of cable that you want uh, he's pretty good so, so he's come very highly recommended i'm uh, curious to install this and, and see how this goes and then of course the end game this is where we're aiming for is going to be this motor this is a 2200 kv capable of 8s this motor has come pretty highly recommended from brandon from innovation rc uh, so this setup, this is going to be the final setup on the car and uh, you know we'll run 6S and by this stage hopefully we've got the car fairly tuned in and uh, we'll have the drive shafts in there as well because this uh, is something that I'm going to be talking about in just a sec um, and uh, yeah we should be able to get some pretty gnarly speeds with that combo. So we'll move that aside and we'll talk about the drive shafts very quickly. Actually no let's skip that and let's go to the radio. Radio I'm going to be using is the DX5 with an AVC receiver. Uh, this is one of the older style AVC receivers. I know that uh, Spectrum have uh, recently announced uh, some newer ones. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. Maybe sometime down the line I'll swap out for the newer ones. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with the uh, DX5C. So I'm happy to run that. Now, these are the drive shafts out of my infraction. Uh, my infraction has already got these bad boys in there. And that's really because if you notice, I may need to put my hand behind here, uh, but one of the things that I posted up on uh, Facebook and Instagram was the fact that uh, when I installed the Max 8 combo in my infraction, I did a bit of a bench test and this guy was oscillating like crazy. So essentially it looks as though the shaft is bent, but it's technically not bent. What's happening is the shaft is spinning off center. So when it spins, it kind of spins like that. And of course, when you apply high RPM, this starts to pull apart in the center and it looks really bad. And of course it rubs on the rear uh, chassis brace. Uh, so uh, a friend of mine by the name of Nick Cross, he got in contact with me and said, hey, the guys over at Amped RC, they're doing these eight millimeter drive shafts made out of hardened steel um, and uh, if you want some let me know I'll, uh, I'll get you a couple and sure enough I ended up purchasing two sets and uh, like I said one's already in the infraction the other one is uh, going to be in the limitless um, and I'm not even going to run the stock shafts on the limitless because just rolling the limitless on the bench you could actually see the shaft oscillating so uh, yeah it's something that I think armor is going to address in the future at least I hope that they do but at the moment, it's just, uh, yeah, some cars will do it more than others. Uh, it's a bit of a shame that that's happening, unfortunately. But hey, you know, this is the V1 of these cars. So you got to expect a little, little things like this to happen. Now, a couple of different sets of tires. These are GRP's S3s. And uh, I've sort of done a bit of a bodgy job to uh, try to balance them. I really like these tires, the way that they feel and everything, but they came extremely badly balanced. Um, and even just putting them on the car and just running them, not even at full speed, the wheels were oscillating like crazy. It was completely unusable and I had to balance them out as best as I could. I used a prop balancer um, and that's, that's how I managed to balance these out. I've used some tape in there, hopefully this will hold and uh, yeah, I'll be able to run these without them exploding. These are a brand new tire. I've not used these before ever. 
These are foam tires. I think the car that's run 150 plus miles an hour was using foam tires. Uh, these are actually from Schumacher. I don't know what speed these can handle. Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I know that a lot of guys out there are using all sorts of different tires from all sorts of different brands. Uh, these we actually sell at Metro Hobbies and I want to see what these can do. If these are useless, well then they're useless. Uh, you know, if you can't get over 100 miles an hour with these before they disintegrate. But if they can hold, if they do well, um, that's really good because then you can get foam tires locally for a very affordable price. Um, so that's the idea with them and that's why I'm going to be uh, testing those out. And then of course power. Um, now, Ovonic have recently come on board and helped uh, kind of support the channel. Uh, they're going to be supplying some batteries to us uh, going forward and uh, I'm hoping that uh, these batteries are actually good. This one here I actually purchased myself. It's a 5200 milliamp 6S. I'm actually, I actually bought this to go inside one of my planes, my EDF planes, but um, this guy will be used, uh, you know, wherever I can to use 6S um, in the uh, in the, uh, the limitless, especially when we flip the motor mount around when I can't use two batteries. These are two 6S uh, 4500 milliamp. Again, these were mainly used for my EDFs, but if I connect them in parallel and have them one on each tray before I um, swing the motor mount around, um, I've got myself 9000 milliamp at 50C, which is more than enough. Uh, for the limitless and then finally uh, two 6000 milliamp 4s uh, these will actually fit perfectly stacked on top of each other on one battery tray so when we finally get to that point where we're going to be running 8s in that setup um, i have my 8s battery right here so that is the plan with this car these are all the electrics and all the batteries that we're going to be running as well as the radio and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this one and uh, look forward to seeing some speed runs with the Limitless. Alrighty, let's close this off. So there you have it, that's how I'm gonna be running my Limitless. If you have any questions regarding those products that i just shown, please be sure to check out the video description. I'm gonna try and have as many links in there to those products as I possibly can, uh, and you can go and uh, get some info on those. Or leave a comment down below, and I'll try and do my best to answer it. Uh, but that is pretty much it for this video. Again, a big shout out to Horizon Hobby for helping me get this car, and a big shout out as well to my Patreon supporters who helped me purchase it. Couldn't have done it without you guys, so thank you all very much. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Check the video description. There'll be links in there to my social media pages. You know, to help you keep a couple of steps ahead of what goes on here on YouTube. I've said this a thousand times. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll speak to you all next time.